Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jameen. Amma ba'ad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal asr. Inna al-insana fi khusr. Illa al-lazhin amun. Wa aminu salihati. Wa tawasaw bil haqqi tawasaw bil sabi. Rabbi Shani Sadri. Wa yisilli amri. Wa halu al-ugudatan bil isani afkaw. I welcome all the viewers of the Peach TV Network, the Peach TV English, the Peach TV Urdu, the Peach TV Bangla, and the Peach TV Chinese, as well as my four social media platforms, which are the Facebook, the YouTube, the Instagram, and Twitter. I welcome all the viewers with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. And I welcome you to the second part of this program, Ask Dr. Zakir and his son Farik. I would like to thank Farik for handling the first few questions. And from here on, inshallah, I will handle the balance question, inshallah. In this program, you're most welcome to ask any questions on Islam comparative religion or any questions that a non-Muslim or an atheist may pose you regarding Islam and you are unable to reply. You can also ask any questions that arise in the media regarding his conception about Islam or the attacking Islam, answers regarding reason, logic, and scientific explanation regarding Islamic teachings. This is the opportunity you can ask questions on any of my four social media platforms, but the best and the most appropriate would be sending a text message on WhatsApp. And you can mention your question in brief along with your name, your profession, the city and country of origin to the WhatsApp number plus six zero double one two six nine five three eight nine five. I repeat plus six zero double one two six nine five three eight nine five. The first question that has come on the WhatsApp, which has been selected by my group. First question is from Brother Yusuf Shuhaib, Ghana. What are the basic guidelines in Islam for choosing a spouse? A similar question is asked by Najiba, Afghanistan. I am a 16 year old girl. How can we love someone in an Islamic way before marriage? And a similar question asked by Abdullah Mohsin from Dubai UAE. If it is not too personal, can we know how did you select a life partner? The first question posed by the brother that what are the guidelines? regarding choosing a life partner or a spouse in Islam. Our beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number seven, hadith number 5069, as well as in Sayyid Muslim, volume number four, hadith number 3635. It is a muttafiq alayk. It's a hadith present in Bukhari, as well as in Sayyid Muslim. It's mentioned, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that women are chosen in marriage for four things the wealth, the lineage or nobility, beauty, and religion. Choose her for the religion. Here in this hadith, our beloved Prophet says that women in marriage are chosen for four things. Wealth, lineage, that nobility, nobility. Third is beauty, and fourth is religion. And the best is religion. That means choose the woman who is religious. Here we come to know that the maximum importance that should be given is to the religion. Because all the earlier three criteria which people normally look for in marriage, it is limited and mainly for this dunya. For example, wealth. Wealth is something 
which can maybe get you some luxury in this world but may not be beneficial in the akhirah in the akhirah as the beloved prophet said it is more difficult for a rich man to go to jannah than a poor man but it's not haram to have wealth but it is not the major criteria you should look for the second is lineage looking at the lineage of the family it's good but that is not the main it is mainly for the dunya you may be coming from a very good family from a noble family the third criteria is beauty which is again limited only to this world beauty is something which you may get tired of in few days or few weeks or a year the best and everlasting mainly for the akhirah as well as for the dunya is religion it is the deen and if i was to pay any weightage in choosing this is my own opinion that 90 to 95% if a boy wants to choose a girl 90 to 95% should be for the deen for the religion because that will get him akhira as well as the dunya yes as far as the wealth is concerned if a man if a boy wants to marry a girl then what use is the wealth of the girl to that boy a good boy who is who has his own self respect but naturally would not like to live on the money of the woman of the wife so irrespective of whether the girl is rich or poor what difference will it make him and even if he want to use that is only for this dunya the lineage may or may not help that will not really count much the beauty as i said is subjective as long as the wife is not a person so maybe you can give about 3 or 4 points or 3 or 4 percent weighted to the beauty as long as she is not a person the d is the maximum 90 to 95% of the weight should be given to the d if it's a boy choosing a girl if a girl is choosing a boy then well to make any certain weight because if the girl is used to having certain comfort in life but natural she cannot marry a boy who is living on the street so if it's a girl marrying a boy then the wealth may have certain weightage maybe maybe about 10% marks the lineage maybe 1% and the handsomeness of the boy as long as he is not repulsive but natural because we want to live with the spouse for the full life you should be satisfied but mentally if you make up a mind you know if you really it's all in your mind any girl can seem to be beautiful if you really it's in your mind so the handsomeness or the beauty carries a smaller percentage so for the man the religion i would say would carry 90 to 95% marks and for the woman when she's looking for a spouse maybe would carry approximately 85% marks the religion the deen which is the most important anyway this percentage is from my side it is not from the hadith the hadith is very clear that the most important is the religion that's it this is my percentage regarding the second question posed by the sister that can we have an islamic love before marriage regarding the love before marriage that we have nowadays in the modern society in the western society but natural it is haram there is no lbw lbw in the cricket you have like before wicket lbw is love before wedding so the way we have in the western culture where there are girlfriend boyfriend and they want to test each other they go out to a park and they go out for a movie they sit in the last bench of the theater or they want to enjoy they go for dinner and they talk and they may go to hotel and sleep overnight all these things is haram in islam yes you can while selecting a life partner have an interview along with the mahram if a boy is going to look at a girl then maybe the boy's sister is there or the girl's father is there in along with the mahram but natural you can ask questions you can interview for few minutes for half an hour for one hour there's no limit you can have one meeting two meeting no problem to understand because you want to spend the full life with the girl and the girl with the boy but going out alone and being in seclusion you know the shaitan is there the prophet said that if there are two nahmaram alone the third person is the devil so in the islamic way yes you can interview but the love before marriage what we have in the in the normal sense in the western world it is prohibited islamic way yes you can have for example you may know the girl may know of a boy who is islamic who is very religious well high taqwa who pray five times a day in the mosque and the day and the girl may want to have a good life partner so islamically what she does is that she 
proposes to the boy who she thinks is religious through her father or through her brother or the parents of the girl going with the parents of the boy and in the Islamic way it's possible. So this sort of love because you like the religious values and the deen in the boy, it is permissible. Islamically, if you go ahead following the rules and regulation, not breaking the Sharia, it is possible in this way if you want to call it love before marriage because you like the religious aspects in the boy or the boy likes the religious aspects in the girl. In this way, not breaking any rules of the Islamic Sharia, then you can call it a sort of love before marriage Islamically, but saying to it that you don't break any of the rules of the Sharia. As far as the third question posed to me is that if it's not too personal, the brother would like to know that how did I select my life partner? And as many of you may be aware that I met Sheikh Ahmed Didas in 1987 the first time when I was 22 years old, I was impressed by him and that's how I got involved in the field of Dawah and my life became more Islamic. Previously I was an average Muslim praying five times a day fasting and doing what normal Muslims should do but the dawah came into my life after I met Sheikh Ahmed Dida. and once I started doing dawah and by last grace alhamdulillah I realized that I was good at debating, I was good at convincing so I thought as far as choosing a life partner for me inshallah, inshallah, no problem any girl I marry I will be able to convince her maybe in a few weeks or a few months or no problem as long as you know I've got no problem the girl I will to convince this was in the initial stages when I was a novice, when I didn't have much knowledge. But naturally, later on, as the years passed, I realized that very important, reading the hadith of the Prophet and knowing the other aspects of Islam, that choosing a life partner is very important. And at that time, I thought that the right age for a Muslim boy to get married is 25. That was my idea that time. Now also, now it may be a little bit earlier. So at that time I thought that 25 years is the best time for a person to get married when he finishes his graduation and he can marry. And at the age of 25 when I started to look for a girl and realizing having more knowledge of the deen, reading the hadith and the Quranic verses, my criteria was based on the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad which is in Bukhari and Muslim, that while choosing a girl you look for four things. First is the wealth, second is the lineage, the nobility, third is the beauty, fourth is the deen, and the best is the deen. You should choose a girl for deen. And this hadith was ingrained in my mind and I decided I want to marry a girl who is as religious as possible, more religious than me. That was my aim, to get a girl who is in the field of dawah and religious. So I told my sister, that look out for a girl and only criteria number one is deen. Regarding wealth, the poor she is the better for me. The poorer she is, better for me. Because I don't want to be any of her wealth. Lineage doesn't matter. And beauty, she should not be repulsive. That was my requirement. And with this requirement, I told my sister that she should find for me a life partner. And believe me, for two years she hunted and she may have searched many girls and unfortunately not a single one did she pass not a, not a single of the girl who she thought and who she interviewed ever passed even the prelims later on we got information that there is a muslima a muslim girl in a neighboring city Pune, which is 160 kilometers from bombay where i lived and, and we came to know that she was the head, the president of a ladies Islamic Dawah organization. And I went along with my sister and my mother and I went to Pune. I traveled all the way. I drove for a few hours 
and I went to Pune and that's how the first time I met my wife and that time she wasn't aware and we met her and we, we spoke to her, spoke to her mother, my wife was there, I mean my, sorry, my mother was there and my sister was there, her mother was there, she was there and later on when we went back then we sent the proposal and then we had a formal meeting. The first wasn't a formal meeting, just we went and we met through one of our common friends. And when we had the formal meeting, we had for a few hours. And Alhamdulillah, she was the first girl I met or I interviewed or I interacted to be my would be wife. And Alhamdulillah, the first was the best. And Allah blessed me, mashallah, with the wonderful wife. And Alhamdulillah, I consider it to be one of the best gifts that Allah has given me. Besides the Iman that Allah has given me, the best gift that Allah gave me is my wife. And she was from Pune. And in the first interview itself, it was nearly fine. Like then we had another meeting. My basic criteria was that she should be religious. And she should be a Thai. These were the two criteria. Religious and Thai. And this, I could not find a girl better than her at that time. Already more than 27 years has passed for our marriage. At that time, I could not find anyone better in my knowledge. And Alhamdulillah, this was the only criteria. The remaining was not at all important. But Alhamdulillah, even though I, I wasn't looking for beauty, MashaAllah, Allah SWT gave me a beautiful wife. And as I said, the beauty is in your mind. And Alhamdulillah. And many people used to ask me that now you're giving so many hours for dawa. I mean, you know, it's about nine, ten hours for dawa. Once you get married, you'll have to give time to your wife. How will you be able to manage both? So one of the reasons that I married a girl who is a daya, so that it's a Venn diagram. Most of our time would overlap. So when I gave approximately five hours to her in a day, maybe three hours was discussing down. But, and then we started an Islamic organization, Ladies Wing, in my organization, Islamic Research Foundation. The moment we got married, first thing we did was started a Ladies Wing, and she was the president of the Ladies Wing of Islamic Research Foundation. So my main criteria was only Deen and Dawa, and but naturally in the interview, the question I asked was based on about what is the concept of purpose of life and other things. So basically these two are the criteria that Allah blessed me and the best blessing for a dai is to have a righteous and supporting life partner. For a dai, the wife can make the life of a dai hell. I know many dai who are very good dai, but after marriage the dawah has been ruined because of the spouse. Allah has blessed me, mashallah, and I consider my wife to be the best wife in the world, that's what I consider. Alhamdulillah and I thank Allah for giving me a spouse which was righteous and because of her after marriage my dawah increased multiple times and kept on increasing more and more to the level now Alhamdulillah Allah bless me and therefore choosing a life partner is very important and as the Prophet said look for a life partner who is religious look for deen in her the other criteria are not at all important. Most important is religious and virtuous. Hope this answers the question. <clears throat> the second question from Muhammad Yunus, Mumbai, India. MashaAllah, you have a family of Daif. What would be the criteria you would look for while selecting a life partner for your son Farik, considering he's also a Daif? Brother Muhammad Yudus has posed the question that what would I look for in life partner if I have to choose a life partner for my son Farik as a Daif? Number one, the choice will depend on my son, not on me. Because my son 
would be leading a life with his wife. He should select the right one. But naturally, I being a father can give guidelines because of experience. If I was to guide my son, and you are already aware of, of the criteria, and we discussed this many times, Alhamdulillah, we are on the same line. We are on the same, same wavelength. And the reason is because of my wife. Whatever my son today is, and my daughters, maximum credit, you could say 80% or more, goes to my wife. And I pose this question very often that when is the latest you would like to plan for the future of your son? So some people say, you know, I would like to plan maybe when my son goes to university or my daughter goes to university. Some people say when she would go to college, some would say in school, some would say, I would plan for my children when they enter nursery. But the Islamic method is, and the Islamic criteria is, that the latest you plan, not the earliest, latest is when you select a life partner. When you select a life partner, then you are planning how would you want your children. So I wanted my children to become daif. That is the reason I selected a daif. I wanted them to be religious. That is the reason I selected a religious girl. And today, most of the people think that my children are daif and alhamdulillah ahead in the field of Dawah and Islam, Alhamdulillah, because of me, if percentage wise I have to give marks, I would say 80% is due to my wife. My guidelines are there, my support is there, everything is there, but the credit goes to my wife. Now coming to the question, what are the criteria that I would see or look for in a life partner for my son Farik Uzadai? As I mentioned in my early answer, a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, Inside Bukhari, volume number 7, hadith number 5090. And the same hadith is repeated inside Muslim, volume number 4, hadith number 3635. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that women are chosen for four things in marriage. When you marry a woman, you look for four things wealth, lineage, Nobility, beauty, and religion. Choose her for her religion. So the Prophet said, though people look for four things in a life partner while choosing a woman for marriage, wealth, lineage, beauty, and religion. Choose her for her religion. The best is religion. And as I mentioned earlier that I would tell my son that while choosing a life partner, see to it that you give 95% weightage to religion. The other three are time bound mainly for worldly things. Religion, hadith, is for the akhirah and for this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that if you seek for this world, Allah will give you this world but not the akhirah. If you seek for Akhirah, Allah will give you Akhirah and this world. As far as the wealth is concerned, I would not like my son to use the wealth of his wife for the living. He should be a man, he should look after himself. He is a kawam. So what difference does it make whether the girl is rich or poor? So as far as the wealth is concerned, there is no way to take out. Only thing you should be careful that poor she is, the better it is. The richer she is, it is difficult. But if she is extremely rich, then you have to be careful. If she is extremely rich and used to that luxury of life, she may be a billionaire's daughter, then I would say, be careful. Unless her deen is 100 out of 100, then maybe she would not care for the wealth that she has. But otherwise, if she is too wealthy, you have to be careful, you may not be able to take care of her. So poorer the better. So the weightage for the wealth is zero. But only be careful that she's not extremely rich. If she's poor, the better. If she's normal, also no problem. Rich, also no problem. But not too rich or excessively rich. Point number two the lineage of the family. I would say that it makes no difference. But if you're coming from a very religious family, it may carry a very small, maybe half percent weightage, according to me. 
if it is good, but whether it is or not, the deen is more important. Some people from the very good family may not be good. We have the examples of children of, of the ambiyas, of messengers, who are mushrikes. We have examples of children of mushrikes who became messengers. So you have both these examples. So lineage is important, but not that much. I would hardly give any weight to that. Maybe half percent. As far as beauty, she should not be a person. But my son should like her. And beauty differs. It's in the eye of the beholder. And everything is in the mind. So I would say, okay, you can give about maybe three or four percentage marks. Three or four percent marks of beauty. Ninety-five percent minimum should be for thee. This is what I would guide him, and this is what I believe in many reasons. Regarding the criteria and the requirement, but naturally the basic requirements that a Muslim should be. In the criteria, I would have eight criteria which are compulsory. Number one, she should be a practicing Muslim following Islam as per the glorious Quran and the Sayyidid and she should do all the faraz. I repeat the first criteria and the most important is she should be a practicing Muslim who follows Islam as per the teachings of the glorious Quran and the Sayyidid and she should do all the faraz. All the faraz means all. Tawheed, she should have taqwa, she should pray by the day, she should give zakat if she has to give, she should fast in the month of Ramadan, if she has to do she should do it. Hijab and all these can speak for us together. Number two, she should abstain from all the haram activities, all the major sins, all the minor sins, as much as possible, but natural. If it's one or two minus sin, no human being can say that it does not sin at all. But abstain from all the major sins, abstain from all the sins if possible, almost all. Number three, she should be virtuous and do as much as mustahab, as much as sunnah of the beloved Prophet Muhammad. Third is a virtuous girl who follows as much as Sunnah of the Prophet, does as much as Mustahab, what is recommended in the Quran and Sayyid. That is a taqwa level should be had. Believe in Tawheed. Besides the five times Salah, she should offer the Tajjid Salah. She should pray the Sunnah of the Mokadah, the Sunnah of the Gyar Mokadah. She should give charity besides the Fard, Fard Zakat. Besides fasting in the month of Ramadan, she should fast the day of Arafah, fast the day of Muharram, that is the 10th of Muharram Ashura, the first 10 days of Zilajah, the three days of Muharram, 9, 10, 11. She should keep the three fast of Shawwal. She should fast three days the Ayamul Bid every month. She should fast on Monday and Thursday and so on and so forth as much as of the mustaq as possible as much as virtuous as possible and this you can speak for us the third point the fourth point is she should have the passion for dawa and spreading the message of islam amongst the muslims and non -Muslims. passion for dawa and spreading the islam teaching Fourth point. Fifth point, she should encourage and support her husband, that is my son, for doing dawah completely. That means she should support in all the dawah activities of my son. She should completely support and encourage and help him in all his dawah activities. Number six. Please show the woman. Number six is that she should be willing to lead a simple life with, which is non-luxurious. Inshallah, my son's life is quite comfortable. 
but if required for the sake of Islam, she should be able to sacrifice all comforts. Seventh, she should be fluent in English because my son is fluent in English and he would want her to be fluent in English. The eighth is she should be able to, she should be willing to settle in Malaysia uh, or wherever my son would shift. But his plan is to stay and live in Malaysia, so she should be willing to settle in Malaysia. These are the eight compulsory criteria. If I would mention the criteria for selecting life partner for my son. As far as the criteria which are very important but not compulsory, number one would be I would want her to be fluent in Fusa Arabic, the classical Arabic, the Arabic of the Quran, she should be fluent in that. The reason is that I would want my children to be fluent in Arabic. My son knows Arabic fluently, Fusa. I would want his wife to know so that the children are fluent in English and Arabic both. Number two, she should be Adaya. She should propagate Islam to the non-Muslims and the Muslims. Number three, she should have a bachelor's degree in any of the Islamic studies. Whether it be Islamic studies in general, or in Sharia, or in Quran, or in Hadith. These are preferable, not compulsory, if a little bit is less or more, no problem, but preferable. The third is bachelor's in Islamic studies. The fourth is, I would also want her to be a Hafiz al Quran. My son is Hafiz, I want to be Hafiz, but the children also are Hafiz. And being Hafiz is preferable for Ijama. Number five, she should be associated with an Islamic organization. And number six, that she should have watched many of the English speaking dies so that she knows what is Dawa and what is the surrounding atmosphere. So these are the six additional points which are not compulsory but preferable. If one is missing or a little bit less, doesn't matter, but there are eight compulsory points and there are six highly recommended preferable points that I would look for in a life partner for my son. These are the main criteria. The addition, of course, is there that there are many additional points. For example, the culture should match and the other things are there. You can't expect a Chinese to live with an African. Then, if the first eight criteria are 95 and above in marks and even the, the additional point six are very good, then the other things can be compromised. The culture differs between the people. So these things are with a secondary intention. But the first compulsory points I've mentioned eight, then the sixth point, and then the others are other points are later on. So this was in brief what I would look for in a life partner for my son Fari. Hope that's it. We have on the Facebook Wadi Max, Kasadul Islam, Azman Toha, Star Boy, Khalil Gutaf, Bijoy Ahmed, Radwan Harun, Imran Hussein, Mutasir Junju, <coughs> Adil Khan. Islam Tiko, Shafayat Mamun, Talatul Sani, Abdul Rafi, Anisul Rahman, Assalamu Alaikum, Wa Alaikum Assalam, many are saying I love you, I love you too. They are doing duas for me, I do duas for you too. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of you in the Firdaus, inshallah.
on the YouTube. <coughs> Nadra Mehaz. Tahir Hussain. Great Man. Young Blood. Muhammad Uzair Sage. Fahad Hassan, Tasneem Saqif, Titan Greyback, Mohammadi Begum, Suraj Keshav, Ajiba Kursin, Kamil Ali, Assalamu Alaikum, Alaikum Assalam, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. The third question is from Saiful Hussain Anoy. I am Rubel from Bangladesh. My question is, I have a savings account which provides me interest and I want to give it to the poor people. Is it possible? A similar question is posed by Farnas Fatima. Can we give interest money in charity? Similar question from Hassa Abu Bakr. Sir, I have a bank account which has interest. Could I remove the interest amount without taking it from the account but giving from other source? What can I do with this interest? <clears throat> from, from the question posed by these three questioners, it is clear that they realize that interest in Dubai is haram. And Allah mentions the word riba in the Quran no less than eight times. And Allah clearly mentions in Surah Bakhra chapter number two, verse number 278 and 279, that if you give up not your demands for riba, for interest, then take notice of a war from Allah and His Rasul. Riba is a major sin in Islam. And according to, and according to Imam Adhabi, he places riba, interest, as 12th major sin in Islam. Our beloved Prophet Musa said, <clears throat> it's mentioned in Mustadar al Hakim, Hadith number 2259. Our beloved Prophet Musa said, there are 73 levels or 73 types of riba, and the lowest level is equivalent to doing zina with your mother. It's a say hadith. The lowest level of riba is like doing zina with your mother. That's what our beloved Prophet said. And Allah says, that if you give up not your demands of riba, of interest, take a notice of a war from Allah and His Rasul. There is hardly any sin you can find in the Quran or the Hadith in which Allah says, Allah will wage a war against you if you indulge in that sin. Imagine. It is such a grievous, heinous sin, riba. Regarding the question posed by all three questioners, that what to do with the interest money? Can we give charity? Can I take out from the bank and give in charity? Can I keep the money in the bank and give from outside equivalent amount in charity? As far as taking interest money and giving in charity, if you have to take the interest money and give in charity, before giving you have to take. So taking riba is haram. So even if you take riba and give in charity, even that is haram. The moment you take interest, you are waging a war against Allah and Rasul. So there is no question of taking. Even taking the riba and giving in charity is haram. You have already done that. By giving in charity, you are lowering the degree, but yet the haram act is done. If you ask me the question, I did not know till today riba is haram. And I already have interest. What to do? That's a separate question. But if someone says, I'll keep the money in the bank. And I give the interest to the poor people. I would ask come to question. And I've asked this question to many. I know there are some scholars who say that no problem, keep it in the bank, take the money and give it in charity is permitted. I disagree with these scholars totally. 
I would like to ask them that if I ask you that can I deal in drugs, in cocaine, brown sugar, or can I, or can I open an alcohol factory and I invest one million dollar and full hundred percent profit, I get more than a million dollar a year. I give that full seven and a half crore Indian rupees in charity. Is it permissible? Hundred percent will say no. I said why? It's haram. If that is haram, having alcohol or dealing in alcohol or in drugs, it is the 19th major sin in the book of Imam al Dabi Khabar. Major sin. And riba is 12th major sin. So when you can give me permission for 12th, the higher sin, why aren't you giving me permission? Why aren't you giving me permission for the lower sin? And imagine when you deal in alcohol, though it's a major sin, Allah and His Rasul doesn't wage a war against you. But when you are dealing in riba, whether giving or taking, Allah and His Rasul is waging a war against you. When you are giving me permission to take the profit of interest money and give in charity and no problem, you should also give me permission to have an alcohol company. 100% are given charity. Let me deal in drugs, cocaine, brown sugar. No, no scholar will give you permission to deal in cocaine and say 100% you can give in charity. Because it's haram. Finoxy. Same thing in riba. When you're dealing in riba, it is spoiling the society. I've given a full talk on interest free economy promulgated by the Gold Quran. It makes a poor man more poor. So, and Allah and the Rasul wage is a war. So, according to me, taking interest and giving a charity is also haram. It, there may be a situation that today you have come to know it is haram. And you already have interest money. What to do? That I can answer. But if you shall keep on continuing keeping in the bank and take the interest and give in charity, that is totally haram. You already, wage, Allah and the Rasul will wage a war against you. It is totally prohibited. If you did not know till now, and today he has come to know, then what can you do with the money? That can be answered. And many scholars they give you an option. For example, Bin Baz, Sheikh Bin Baz has said that this money you can give in paying debts of the other people. But naturally, all the scholars say that the interest money you cannot utilize for yourself. Though you cannot take interest, but if it's the last resort, it has come due to unwillingness. For example, there is pension. In the pension, without your permission, they keep it in some interest-based investment. It's coming without your willingness. That's a different question. Or you have someone in your job or your company. It comes indirectly in which you have no control, but you cannot yourself open a saving account or a fixed deposit and then give the money charity. No, that's not permitted. If you did, and you say, I will never do it again, then I can tell you what, what can you do with the money. Number one, you can give in, you can give it to the debtors, those who are debt. Number two, you can use it for building toilets or bathrooms. Number three, you can give it in charity to the poor people, but you can't give it in charity to your dependent. You can't give it to your son or your daughter, they are your dependent. You can't give it to your mother and father, they are dependent. In short, you cannot give it to those people who you will inherit from, in short. And neither can you give it to those people which is your duty to take care of them. You cannot give it to someone who you are supposed to take care of. You can give it to a third party who is not under your care. But as far as debt is concerned, according to Sheikh Ibn you can even give to those people who are under your care, whether it be your son, whether it be your father, because debt is not your liability. You are liable to take care of the day to day living. So if your father or if your son or if your daughter is in debt, you can use your zakat money for them also. Normal zakat you can't use for a dependent, but for debt you can. Similarly, this money what you have, which unwillingly came to you, you can use this interest money for paying the debt even of your dependent or anyone else. You can use it for poor people who are not your dependent. You can use it for charity or for building toilets, but see to it that you do not continue indulging in the riba because Allah is very clear cut that if you want to repent, there are minimum five things that you should do. Number one, agree it is wrong. So now you have agreed that riba is wrong. Okay. Number two, stop it immediately. That means you have to change your account. You can't say continue. You have to stop that account. Put in the current account. 
If you think it is a requirement to have a bank account, who okay, can have a current account? I lived in India, we live in non-Muslim country, and you can have a current account. Current account doesn't involve riba at all. See to it that you open an account in which there is no riba. Some accounts have riba. Open a current account which is absolutely free of riba. Because when you open a savings account, you are signing, you are giving them permission to use your money and give you riba. If you open a fixed deposit, then you are giving them permission to use your money and they're giving you a rebound. That's totally haram. So if you have an account which is fixed in fixed deposit, or if you have a savings account, convert it to a riba free current account. Then what money you have, you can give it in the way that I've told you. Regarding if you have money in the bank and you have outside money, yes, you can swap it, no problem, but see to it, but you cannot continue with that account. Maybe that's wrong. What do you have to do? You have to come out of that account and open a current account. If you feel that keeping money in your house is difficult, it is not safe, you can keep in the bank, or you may have to involve in making transaction by check, which may be a legal requirement, open a current account which is absolutely free from it. But best is to open an Islamic bank and current account. Next best is if there is no Islamic bank in your country or in the area where you are living. Second best is you can open a conventional bank, but see to it, it is a current account free from riba. What riba you have because of your ignorance that you can give in charity to the poor people, it is permissible. Next question from Naushad Ahmad. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Is using credit card halal? If you are talking about the conventional credit card where, where the bank gives you permission that you can utilize X amount of money depending upon the credit card whether it is bronze level, silver level, gold level depending upon the amount, some give you few thousand dollars, some give ten thousand dollars, some give forty thousand dollars depending upon the level. And this money that you utilize you have to give within one or two months and if you give that then there is no interest, if you give up above that then there is an exorbitant interest which goes to up to maybe 3% a month that is 36% anywhere from 2 to 3% a month that is 24 to 36% a year which is exorbitant and I know there are some scholars who say that if you are using a credit card as long as you see to it you pay within the stipulated time within the one month or two month frame and no, if no interest that is permitted I disagree with it it is totally haram the moment you take a credit card from a conventional bank, you are signing a document saying that if you do not pay it in time, you will give riba. Signing a document that you will pay riba is also haram. Allah and His Rasul will wage a war against you. So even using a credit card with the intention that you will not over, you will not take longer than the time permitted, I know majority of the Muslims living in Western countries, in America, in European countries, in UK, have a credit card from a conventional bank. Majority, unfortunately. I know there are scholars of the Western countries that need permission. It is 100% totally haram. All the major scholars, whether it be, whether it be Bishop Utaymi, whether it be Sheikh Bin Baz, majority have said even having a credit card of conventional bank is haram because we are finding and who can give guarantee that you will always pay on time? You are a human being. You can make a mistake. If once also you forget to pay on time, it is haram. Allah and the Rasul will war against you. Even if you pay on time regularly, only signing a document is haram. So using a credit card of a conventional bank, it's totally haram. I am aware there are some scholars that have been permission. I disagree with them. What you can do is you can have a credit card from Islamic bank. If it is Islamic bank, you can have a credit card. The other one you can do is have a debit card. Open a current account in a conventional bank and open a debit card. Debit card means the money is already in your account that you are not signing a document saying that you pay interest. So debit card in a conventional bank is permitted. Credit card in a conventional bank is haram. However, credit card in the Islamic bank is permitted because it works on the Islamic principles, on the Sharia basis. There is no riba involved in this. So the best option is have a credit card in Islamic bank. 
The second option is have a debit card in a conventional bank which does not attract any interest. But credit card in a conventional bank is haram. It's a major sin. It is equivalent to doing zina with your mother. That's what a prophet said. It is clearly mentioned in Mustad al Hadith number 2259, that there are 73 levels of riba. The lowest level is doing zina with your mother. And it's clearly mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 278 to 279, that if you give up not the demands of riba, take notice of a vow from Allah and his soul. So I request all the Muslims, brother, in any part of the world, if you have a credit card from any of the conventional bank, please, today itself, if not today, tomorrow, please discontinue it, open an Islamic bank. If you don't have an Islamic bank, convert it into a debit card. Debit card is permissible when there is no requirement. Hope that's the question.